Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So continuing our discussion about antibiotics, today we will be talking about the, the clindamycin. The clindamycin is a protein synthesis inhibitor from the lincozamides. The lincozamides uh, have two drugs. The lincomycin is the first lincozamide that was discovered in the 1964 uh, and it caused severe toxicity so it is uh, its use is stopped and the other drug is the clindamycin which is discovered in the 1966 and has less toxicity and it has wider use even nowadays the clindamycin is sometimes considered as a macrolide by some books because there is similarities in the spectrum and the mechanism of action with the microlytes, but we will discuss it as a separate uh, antibiotic and we will talk about the pharmacokinetics, the mechanism of action, the, the spectrum, the resistance, the therapeutic uses, and the adverse effects. So let's start. So let's start by talking about the pharmacokinetics of the clindamycin. Regarding the pharmacokinetics, we always uh, talk about the ADMI. The A starts for the A stands for administration. So, administration. The clindamycin is available as oral and IV formulas. The oral formula has good absorption, even with food. So good absorption of oral uh, formula, uh, even uh, with food, uh, but it causes pain because it causes irritation to the esophagus and to the stomach, so causes pain during swallowing and after that nausea and vomiting might occur so let's talk about distribution so distribution of the clindamycin distribution the clindamycin has molecular weight of 424, 424, and it has a poor penetration to the blood brain barrier. To blood brain uh, barrier, but it has a good penetration to body fluids like pleura and prostate it also across the placenta but it is not teratogenic so cross placenta and uh, not teratogenic during pregnancy and has a good concentration in breast milk in breast milk and it kills the bacterial flora of the uh, neonate or the kid intestine and that might lead to diarrhea so good concentration in breast milk and might lead to diarrhea in the growing child and also in the distribution the clindamycin has good penetration to bones and joints so good uh, penetration to uh, bones and joints the bones have poor vascularity so there, there is a limited antibiotics that work on them the clindamycin is one of these antibiotics and it works on the osteomyelitis 
so and that's what make it different from the macro lights so it has good penetration to points and joints and finally the half-life of the clindamycin is 2.5 hours and it has a post antibiotic effect of about four to six hours the metabolism of the uh, clindamycin is in the liver metabolism in the liver and excretion is through urine and bile so excretion urine through urine and bile and there is no dose adjustment in people who have renal failure yeah uh, now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the clindamycin so it binds into the 50s ribosomal subunit it's a protein synthesis inhibitor so it binds to the 50s uh, subunit and inhibit protein synthesis in the bacteria and it binds into the same location as the macrolides bind yeah and it is bacteriostatic bacteriostatic regarding the spectrum of the clindamycin so so the bacteria in general is divided into aerobic uh, and anaerobic the aerobic bacteria divided into gram uh, positive and gram negative the anaerobic bacteria same for them is divided into gram positive and gram negative the clindamycin works on the aerobic gram positive bacteria and anaerobic gram negative bacteria and the gram negative and gram negative aerobic and the gram positive anaerobic those are resistant to the clindamycin so the gram positive aerobic examples include the staph staphylococci the streptococci and the pneumococci examples for the anaerobic gram negative would be the fusobacterium and others it also works on the protozoa so work on protozoa so it works as anti-protozoa such as the toxoplasma and the malaria regarding resistance of the clindamycin so there is cross resistance cross uh, resistance with the macrolides is the present so if some bacteria is resistant to macrolides it is most likely is going to be resistant to the clindamycin also so cross resistance with uh, macrolides Uh, resistance patterns by the bacteria there is different ones uh, the most common ones are modifying of the binding site and enzymatic inactivation and Clostridium difficile is always resistant to the clindamycin so Clostridium difficile is uh, always resistant uh, now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the clindamycin so it works on uh, soft tissue skin and soft tissue infections skin and soft uh, tissue infections uh, caused by citrip or staph by streptococci or staphylococci 
It also works on the dental infections. Dental infections. That's because it has good penetration to bones. Good penetration to bones. And also because it works on the anaerobes and most of the dental infections are caused by anaerobes. So it works on anaerobes. It also works on bone and joint infection, bone and joint uh, infection such as osteomyelitis or septic arthritis that's for the same reasons it has good penetration to bones and joints and it also works on any aerobes which mostly cause the bones uh, infections it also work on toxin secreting bacteria so toxin secreting uh, bacteria such as the exotoxin secreted by the staphylococci exotoxin uh, by staph the exotoxin works or works as super antigen this super antigen lead to triggering of the immune system to produce more cytokines so exotoxin work as super uh, antigen that trigger immune system to release more cytokines we get the cytokines and we get the vasodilatation because the cytokines lead to vasodilatation and this might lead to uh, hypotension so hypotension and organ failure the clindamycin work on the uh, staph by inhibiting the protein synthesis so this would lead to less toxin produced and uh, it is combined usually with a penicillin or cephalosporin the cephalosporin would cause uh, this combination would cause a synergy synergistic effect and would lead to better effect but the penicillin or cephalosporin are not given alone because if you give them alone, this will lead to the bacterial, the cell wall being, uh, being destroy, destroyed by the penicillin or the cephalosporin. And this will lead to heavy uh, exotoxin release from the bacteria and will lead to even severe, even more severe symptoms. So the clindamycin work for work as uh, to decrease the toxin production and the penicillin work to kill the bacteria and this would uh, give us the better effect. The clindamycin also used in any uh, anaerobic infection uh, such as the gas gangrene uh, and it's also used in the treatment of acne to prevent and to treat the bacterial infections associated with the acne uh, yeah so it's to treat and prevent the bacterial infections associated with the acne finally let's talk about the adverse effects of the clindamycin uh, it causes uh, clostridium difficile colitis difficile colitis it is also called uh, super infection uh, this is caused by the clindamycin killing all the uh, intestinal bacteria 
and leaving the resistant ones uh, and in this case it is the C difficile and the Clostridium difficile would be dominant and it would grow uh, and become pathogenic and causes severe diarrhea, abdominal pain and this is treated with metronidazole as a first line and if the metronidazole did not work we have the vancomycin, the oral vancomycin as a second line. The clindamycin also causes impaired liver function, impaired uh, liver function with or without jaundice and it might also cause a neutropenia. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Peace.